captivating Gen Zs with exciting digital content. So once again, visual content needs to be exciting. It needs to be colorful. It needs to be the big word different because they like to adapt. So if you've got the same thing over, if you bring something out that's really exciting and you bring the same thing out tomorrow that's equally as exciting, they won't be excited. So you have something, you've got something exciting that, that's red and yellow and you bring something else that's exciting that's black and white, they'll like that. But if you bring red and yellow, then red and yellow, they won't like that. So you need to understand this. It's not like it's right or wrong. You just need to understand that they're constantly looking for the shiny ball. It's called shiny ball syndrome. Um, and it's, it's something I wrote about in my book, Success 1010 for Living. Uh, it's, it's something that people address. It's called shiny ball syndrome where you where you're looking for the shiny ball. When the child has a brand new ball, it's brand new, they're kicking it around, then it gets dirty. Then they get another ball and they start playing with the new ball because it's brand new. Z gens look a, look a little bit into the shiny ball syndrome. Um, addressing preferences by incorporating these interactivity uh, within their training and the shiny balls. Um, equipping staff with the skills to create captivating videos. So stuff that has messaging. So your videos can't be deliberately boring. They, they, I mean, you, you might do it by mistake, but it needs to have messaging. You need to have the message there. Like Gen Z staff enhance training programs with multimedia presentations to keep them going, to keep them captivated, to keep them on the edge of their seats. They like to talk about things, so they'll promote it afterwards. So if something is good, they'll promote it. If something is bad, they'll also promote it. So you've got to be careful of the messaging because, you know, um, McDonald's put out a, um, a series of research years ago, and I think it was something like one happy customer goes away and tells 14 people or 12 people, but one upset customer goes out and tells something like 23. So you think about it, when you get somebody that promotes things, they're out there tell, talking more so about the negative things. Zgens like to promote things and they do it because of social media and because of influencers. That's the way they've been brought up. So collaborative projects encourage cross-generational teams. So using cross-generations, um, that diversification, encourage communication, feedback, combining, combining different skills. You know, at Google, they often form diverse project teams that bring together employees of different ages. They do it on purpose. They get one of this color, one of that color, one of this size, one of that size. They get all different colors, a bit like those lo lollipops, you know, all different types of lollipops all different ages and backgrounds, and they bring them all together to foster this innovation and understanding. Because if you get 15 people with the same value, you're not gonna go very far. If you get 15 people with different values, you know how important that is? It's, a, it's like going to a country overseas. You go to one country, you come back with all these different ideas. You travel to 10 countries, you come back with 10 times the amount of ideas. It's the same, and that's what Google tried to implement. And it worked, you know, and this is part of what we're talking about collaboration. Boosting Gen Z bonds with open talk and feedback. We've spoken about this, but it needs to be regular. So it can't just be today because it'll simmer off. They have a very, very small attention span. So what they learn today, they'll love it for the next two, three days. They'll promote it and then it'll just fester off. So you need something new to come in. Transparency, a responsive feedback culture we've spoken about, but it needs to be to retain Gen Zs not just the track, to retain them. So they want to come back with the feedback. Um, organizing activities for interaction among all groups, uh, plan diverse activities, enhancing bonding. Zappos is known for its company culture that includes various team building activities. So Zappos promote a sense of community among all their employees and everything they're doing is high-fiving. Everything he's doing is you know, grabbing each other's arm and going hand in hand, side by side. It's, a, it's cultivating a community through diverse activities, fostering that unity. This is the way you foster gender, Gen Z relationships. And you know, the more mature generations, they're not used to that. So it's, 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 it goes back and forth. Pajama parties, this is my favorite topic. So, you know, we, we basically started pajama parties at Dynamo and we called them pajama parties specifically because we we're going into forums about objection handling and we'd have all these different objections. And then what we found in these pajama parties is that, when I say pajama parties, you didn't wear pajamas, but in these pajama parties, 
everyone would come together, we'd lock the dorm and say, right, let's put all the objections up and let's go through these. But what we found is all this other stuff came out, all this gold. Well, I don't like this person for doing that. I don't like that client for doing this. I didn't realize how hard it was. So you get all these negative nuances coming out in these pajama parties and allows them to vent. And this venting just withers away. And they walk out of the pajama party like little kids that have gotten off all this stuff off their chest. It builds camaraderie um, beyond professional roles um, and encourages participation, inclusivity. HubSpot hosts social events and gatherings and encourages interaction and bonding among its employees. A little bit similar to the pajama parties that we've designed, but Dynamo calls them pajama parties. So Millie Bobby Brown, so Millie Bobby Brown, born in 2004 in Spain, notable Gen Z actress, known for Stranger Things and Enola Holmes. She used her fame to advocate for social causes and embody the Gen Z spirit. Um, she's the youngest UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador. She focuses on children's rights, education, and her experiences and activism make her a Gen Z icon. So this is the pure and simple Gen Z icon of today. Now she's def definitely a Z Gen, she's born straight in the middle, smack bang in the middle, but she's the sort of person that everybody looks up to if they're a Z Gen. She's not, you know, the, the she's not the Michael Jordan of basketball. She's out there notably going out and doing things for her culture. Okay, so when it comes to Millie Bobby Brown, born in 2004, so she's definitely, definitely, Zedgen. Her experience in activism makes her a Gen Z icon. She was born in Spain uh, and she's a notable Gen Z actress known for Stranger Things and Enola Holmes. But she used her fame to advocate for, for social causes and, and she embodied the Gen Z spirit. She's been the youngest UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador focusing on children's rights and education. Now, the reason why she did this is because that's her purpose. The reason why she did this is because that's her cause. And what makes her so important? Because she's doing it for something she believes in. And it's a global thing, right? So it makes her that important person. Now, she is an actress that is really powerful among the Z-Gens. Someone else might be an actor or an actress that hasn't done this, and they might walk into the airport and nobody would know them. But she's got such a big pull through when it comes to followers on social media. It just, you know, with, with, with what she believes in with activism, and being an icon, there's a lot of power that she can bring to the table when it comes to the Z Gens. And if you incorporate your knowledge around knowing Millie and understanding Millie, you can build a bond with the Z Gen that just takes a little bit of research for you to do that, you know, to be able to, to get, make that connection. And then there's Malala, born in 1997. She's born in Pakistan, a brave and inspiring figure. She was basically Taliban attacked when she was 15, she, she didn't stop being brave. She started inspiring people. She was promoting for education and community. A woman that has been through so much trauma and so much malicious uh, behavior by the Taliban, she's gone out there and she's promoted her cause around education community around, you know, around the world despite the Taliban threats. And she's been the youngest person to receive a Nobel Prize. She plays such an important role in the global fight for fair education led by young people. And she's got a massive following. She's one of the, the icons when it comes to the Z generation. But just goes to show you that, you know, the Michael Jordans of the world, the Muhammad Ali's of the world, um, you know, the Sophia Lorenz of the world, they're not the sort of people the Z gens are interested in. These are the people the Z gens are interested in. So by knowing a little bit about these people and their power and their purpose and their reasoning, it allows you to build that bridge, that bond, that connection I hope you've enjoyed this presentation as well. My name's Raymond Volpe.